Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. For those of you who don't know, my name is Danny, and today I'm going to be talking about America vs New Zealand, in particular the differences between the two countries as I've been living in America for over two months now. There's the obvious things like driving on the other side of the road, the money's different, stuff like that. So I'm going to be talking about the more specific things that you'd probably only pick up on if you did live here or stayed here for a longer period of time. So yeah, let's begin! Please don't think that I'm complaining about another country or anything like that because I promise you I love them both dearly and this is just some of the differences that I've found, some being good and some being bad. So the first thing I'm going to share is something that really did take me by surprise but it did take me a while to get used to. So when we were in a restaurant in LA, the waitress came and got our menus from us and as she took them away, I said thank you to which she replied, uh huh. And I was just like, what? I've never heard anyone say, uh huh before. Like, did that mean she didn't like me very much? Was she annoyed at me? I don't know, it just came across as quite rude. Initially, I was just kind of offended, like, what is that? It's not even a response to anything. But I quickly learned that the whole of America does this, and it's just another way of them saying you're welcome. But I mean, really? How hard is it to just say you're welcome? I don't know. Bathrooms slash restrooms. This is a huge one for me. In particular, the toilet. Why are your toilets completely full of water? In America, they're just like, we're gonna fill the whole thing up. I don't know why, but they, it's just, it's completely full of water, especially in the places like California where they're having a drought. I'm like, why do you need so much water in the toilet? Back home in New Zealand, there's probably like a quarter of the water in the toilet as what there is in America, so it's a bit strange. Okay, the other thing is you guys have massive gaps between each toilet. Like the toilet doors is like a gap, like, like this big, and they may not seem like actually that big, but when you're in a toilet somewhere that is supposed to be very private, it kind of is because you can actually see through each of the stalls and you can see the people in there. And one time I actually made eye contact with someone that was outside. They could see me. They could see me sitting on the toilet. Yeah, that's weird. Like, why do you make them like that? The next thing I'm going to talk about is the amount of sheer variety options and stores that they have in America. They have just everything and anything you could ever want. There's so many stores here that we don't have back in New Zealand. In fact, pretty much most of them we don't have. So I love being here for that reason because anytime you want to get something in New Zealand that we don't have in one of our local stores, which is quite often, you have to pay like $100 shipping plus your soul to get anything delivered from America. So. Yeah, it's nice actually being in the country. Especially with places like Walmart and Target, which are amazing because they just have so many things. But like, I really do wonder how small businesses survive here. And the thing is, you'd think it would be great having everything you need in one shop. And yes, it is, but because of the size of these stores, I just get super overwhelmed, end up spending the whole day in there, getting lost, and buying way too much that I don't need. This kind of leads on to American money. So American money looks so crazy. American money looks exactly like Monopoly money. It's made out of paper. You can easily just like screw it up and rip it in half, which I have done because, yeah, I'm used to the money back home, which is kind of like has this laminated film on it. And like, why do pennies and nickels even exist? Like, they're so pointless. When you buy something in a store in New Zealand, it is the exact price of what it says. It's going to be on the price tag. But here in America, because of tax and tipping, it turns out to be a really strange number. I'm not OCD, but I like my numbers to be even, so when it comes out with something really random, it stresses me out, and like, I don't know how much money I'm gonna have to need to pay for it. Like, when I go to pay, there's just so much pressure that comes over me, because I have to like, look through my money and figure out what is what and how much I need, and when it comes to tipping, I do not know how much to tip. It's been like two minutes every time trying to figure out which money is which, and what am I supposed to tip? And why do we even have to tip? Like I understand that minimum wage is lower here, so it's a good incentive for workers to work harder. But then again, I just feel like if we just added GST to the prices, that would just make life easier for everyone. Another thing that I found pretty funny about living in America is when I say New Zealand words or New Zealand slang, people look at me with a blank expression on their face like, I've never heard that word before and I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't realise that New Zealand has so much slang. I didn't realise that we had so many words that we only use in New Zealand, but apparently we do because I've had a lot of instances when people were just like, Danielle, I don't know what you're saying. 
So there's lots of words, but for instance, when I say things like jandals, togs, the boot of a car, dodgy, like when someone's really kind of sketchy, things like that, people just have no clue what we're talking about. They also have words here that mean different things than they do back home. One of them is lemonade. So back home, lemonade means Sprite, and there's nothing else it can mean. We only have one version of lemonade, but here, lemonade is different than Sprite. Lemonade is like kind of like the homemade, more natural, probably not natural, it's American, let's be real, but it's not the fizzy version of Sprite. It's like the more traditional homemade lemonade, I don't know. But it's super yum, I love it so much, I wish we had it in New Zealand. Another thing I've noticed is, where are all the sheep at? In New Zealand we have, I think, around 60 million sheep, and I have not seen a single one the whole time that I've been in America. I also want to talk a little bit about the people here. So I feel like New Zealand is known for having the nicest people in the whole world. Now, after coming to America, I would actually have to disagree with that. Wherever you go in the world, of course there are going to be some amazingly nice people and some not so nice. But for the most part, I've found that everyone is so lovely and so kind and just willing to go out of their way and help you out here in America. It's just, I was, it was actually really unexpected for me, but I feel like everyone is really nice. I've been to a few states now and it's kind of like the same across the board. Also, I don't know if this is just on my campus at university, everyone here holds doors open for you. And people do it at home some of the time, but not all of the time. And just everyone always holds the door open, but it's to the point where it's a little bit awkward because some guys will like hold doors open when you're still like 50 meters from the door. And it's like, just it just makes it so awkward because I just have to do this awkward like run walk thing to get to the door in time. And it's like, dude, you could have just gone already and I could have opened the door for myself. I wasn't going to be offended if you didn't wait for me to get there so you could hold the door open. Your traffic light crossings. So they don't make sound here. Back home there's like a really obnoxious sound that the traffic lights make when you can cross the road. And here the little green man isn't green, he's silver, but he just goes silver and then you've got to, you've got to be looking out to make sure you're ready to cross. Back home you can just be like doing your own things only out in a whole other world. And when you hear that sound you'll know when to cross. So yeah, you've got to pay more attention when walking. Which can be hard for some people. So the last thing I want to talk about is the quality of food. I definitely feel like I took the food in New Zealand for granted because New Zealand food seems naturally better and just a little bit more healthy and organic in general. Anywhere you go, everything is pretty much sweet here. It just seems like there's additives to everything. The chocolate tastes sweeter in my opinion and bread is so much sweeter. But I feel like at this point I'm kind of going to used to it so I'm a bit scared about when I go back to New Zealand if I'm not going to like the bread anymore there because I'm addicted to the sugar and the bread here now. I don't know. So I think that about sums up the difference that I have found living in Jose. I've got one sentence to go, let me finish. <laughs> You're so evil. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next week. I've also got a couple of Halloween makeup tutorials planned for next week so stay tuned. Bye!